Hello, fifth graders. Welcome to lesson 8.4, fraction and whole number division. Please pause to write the lesson number and title in your notebook. Today's objective is to divide a whole number by a fraction and divide a fraction by a whole number. Please pause to write the lesson objective in your notebook. Let's jump in and read the unlock the problem. It says, three friends share one fourth pound of a block of fudge equally. What fraction of a pound of fudge does each friend get? So we have a fourth of a pound and we're gonna split that fourth of a pound into a smaller pieces. So if we look here at our model, it says let the rectangle represent a one pound block of fudge. Now we don't have a whole block, but we're going to use it to represent one fourth. Divide the rectangle into fourths and then divide each fourth into three equal parts. So it's already split into fourths for us here, one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, four fourths, but it says we're gonna split each fourth into three because we're gonna share it equally with three friends. So I'm gonna take my fourths and I'm gonna split them into three equal parts. Okay, now each rectangle is divided into, if we look at the whole thing, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So I have 12 equal parts. When you divide one fourth into three equal parts, you are finding three parts of one third or one fourth. So let's shade one third of one fourth. So if I just look at the one fourth pound of fudge I have, I'm going to shade one third of my one fourth. So that means I'm going to shade one of the three pieces, which if we look at the whole rectangle, means that I've shaded one out of 12 pieces. So complete the number sentence. Each friend will get one twelfth of a pound of fudge. So we can look at this as one fourth divided by three equals one third times one fourth. You can think of fraction division with a phrase keep, change, flip. We're gonna keep one fourth. We're going to change the operation then we're going to flip three upside down. If three had an invisible one underneath it, then flipping it upside down would make it one third. And then we can multiply straight across the top, three, one times one is one, and straight across the bottom, three times four is 12, which gives us our answer, one twelfth. Let's try ex the second example on this page on my next slide. Example two, Brad has nine pounds of grand turkey. He wants to make turkey burgers for a picnic. How many one third turkey burgers can he make? So we're going to be dividing nine divided by one third because I have nine whole things and I'm gonna split, split each thing into groups of three. Let's read the green box to give us some information. It says, will the number of turkey burgers be less than or greater than nine. Well, if I have nine whole things, if I split them into pieces, then I'm gonna have more than nine because each group of nine, I now split. So it's going to be greater than nine. Now let's go ahead and draw this example. It says draw nine rectangles to represent each pound of ground turkey. So they gave us the nine rectangles. Now we're going to divide each of the nine rectangles into thirds because we're dividing by one third. So we're gonna split each rectangle into three pieces. Now, if we have nine groups of three, then that must mean Nine times three gives us 27 thirds. If we count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, five to six, 27, it confirms our multiplication. 
let's continue by using our keep, change, flip method. We keep the first one, we change our operation, and we flip the last one. So upside down, one third would be three over one, which would just be regular three. And nine times three is 27. So Brad can make 27 one third pound size turkey burgers. Great job so far, fifth graders. Let's continue on our practice with the next examples. Example A has one fourth divided by two. You can see here that if I took my whole thing and I had one fourth of it, and then I took that fourth and I split it in half, then I would have one eighth. Let's do some math to back this up. If I have one fourth of something, then I can multiply it by the opposite, the upside down flip of two over one, which would be one half. And then I can multiply. One times one is one, and four times two is eight. Example B, we have four things, and we're gonna split each thing into half. They tell us it equals eight. Let's do the math to prove it. Remember, keep the four, change the sign, flip it upside down. So two goes on top, because I'm flipping one half upside down. We don't need the invisible one underneath, so four times two is eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight pieces. Let's answer the questions below. It says, look at example A. Describe how the model is showing dividing two is the same as multiplying by one half. Well, we know that opposites are called the inverse operation. And if I divide by two, that would be the same as finding half of something. So inverse operations make it the same. Question number two says, look at example B. Describe how the bar model shows that dividing one half is the same as multiplying by two. So I took four and I multiplied it by one half. That would mean that I'm taking four groups of one half. That would look like one half plus one half plus one half plus one half. So that would give me eight halves, which would be four. The opposite of doing that would be to take eight and divide it by two. That would might give me an answer of four. Both ways, I get an answer of four. Great job so far, fifth graders. Time for the lesson activity. The lesson activity is the try this section at the bottom of your page. It says, for the two expressions below, which one will have a quotient that is greater than its dividend? Remember, the dividend is the one that goes inside the house. So for example, if I had one half divided by three, let's show keep, flip, change. So we keep one half, we change, and then we flip the three, which would be one third. So this would give me one sixth. Where on the other hand, if I have three things and I divide it into half, that would be three times two over one, which would give me six. So which one has a greater answer? Well, I know that six is greater than one sixth. So when I divide a fraction by a whole number, a fraction divided by a whole number, that's the first example, <clears throat> then I get a number that is less than what I started with. One sixth is less than one half. But when I divide a whole number by a fraction less than one, then the quotient is going to be less than, greater than, or equal to. You fill in the blank 
on your page and be prepared to show your teacher tomorrow. Great job, fifth graders.